The only thing that differentiates a professional flyer from an amateurish flyer is simply design mistakes. And today, I'm going to show you five design mistakes many designers make. And then the most important part of this video is that I'm also going to show you how you can avoid all those mistakes. But if you stay with me to the end of this video, I will give you two more tips that you can use to level up your design gear. So get your notebooks ready or you can even save this video to watch later so that whenever you are done designing, you cross check and see whether you have made all these mistakes. So without any further ado, let's get started. So the biggest mistake most designers make is that they fail to check how legible their designs are. This brings me to the first point, which is legibility. Legibility is how audience or your users can read and understand your design. So if it is a flyer, how users can understand the content from the flyer, that is simply legibility. This legibility issues happen mostly when you want to add text to a flyer. So look at this design here, for instance, you can see that the text on the image is not all that legible. So many users cannot read the text on the image. Another way too is that look at this one, for instance, the color of the text and then the color of the background it's not matching and it's not giving that kind of contrast that users can read it yeah so these two things are the main thing that you have to focus on when you're designing to make your flyers legible now let me show you how you can solve this first one that is the test on image for the test on image i simply add a dark layer behind the test so behind the test we add a dark layer so that the test will be visible and then the image too will be visible like that let me show you how to do that right in photoshop Mind you, you can also do save in any design software. So the design is right here in Photoshop and I'm going to show you how you can easily add a dark layer behind this text so that it will be legible for your audience and the image to show as well. So let me show you how to do that really quick cool one. Before you do that, make sure that your layers are the extent. If I see your layers are the extent, make sure you can differentiate between your layers. So you can see the please subscribe layer is for this one. The 20,000 subscribers is for this one. This layer too is for either this or that. So let me get, let me see. Yeah, so there's an element here, that's the layer. And then this one too is for this one. Now, I want all this element to be in front of the dark layer. So this image will be here. That is, this is the layer of the image. So the image is here and this is the layer. And then I want the dark layer to be in front of the image. So what I'm going to do is that now that I have selected the layer of the image, and I'll come down here to this part, click on this one, and I'll go to gradient. And with the gradient, you can see it has already selected what I want. But if it doesn't select automatically like this, what you do is that you click on the gradient here and it open up the basics. And as you can see, we have color to transparent. You can see the name here. So you click on this one, you can see foreground to background. When you click on this one, you can see foreground to transparent. And when you click on this one, you can see black, white. Now, what you are going for is the foreground to transparent. So that's what you select. And then you click on OK. Now, you bring this one here and then you open up the scale. And then you try to move around with this one to see or let's say to do to go with the one that you think will best fit for you mind you you can also change the color if you think black or let's say uh, dark is not working for you so let's say if i want to go for a color like this so the dark shade of this color see something like this you can see works works better so something like this something like this yeah so you click on okay okay and then you, are, you make sure it is as how you want it to be. And then, okay, again, you can see this looks better and more legible. So this is the before and this is the after. More legibility, better contrast, everything is on point. Now, with the second one, that is the color of the text and then the background. All that you have to do is that first of all, copy the color or let's say the hair score of the color of the text like this so with this particular design right here what you have to do is that you have to get the hex code of the color of the test so you right click on the test like this the 20k subscribers and then you come to the layers panel you go to the color click on it like so let's bring this one up a bit and as you can see this is the hex code all that you have to do is that make sure that everything is selected like that and then you press and hold on Control plus c to copy it now after copying open your favorite browser and then search contrast checker so the first link, as you can see, we have foreground and then background. So you paste the color of the text as the foreground. That's the white, white. And then for the background, you have to come back to your design. And then you copy the background, that is the shape. So let's cancel this one. And then let's right click on the shape. Make sure it's red rectangle one, that's the shape. 
Confirm if there's the one you have selected. Come up here, click on the fill, and then click on the color here. And as you can see, this is the color code. So let's copy it, control C to copy. And then let's come back to the browser. So we are here in our browser and then we paste it at the background section. So let's select all this, control V, paste. And now let's see. As you can see, it has filled as a normal test. It has filled as a large test. It has filled as a graphical object and user interface component. So at this point, what you can do is that you increase the lightness of it. Just increase the lightness of it. So when you are increasing, then you are checking the normal test, the large test and the graphical object and user interface components. Most of the time, the thing that you need to check is the normal test. If this part, the WCAGAE -E, tends to pass, you are good to go. So let's check that. So you can see, we are increasing it. You can see, let's go back a bit. Okay. Okay, so it's around 4.83 is to 1. Now, this one is fast. That means you can copy this color from here and then go and paste it as our background color. So all that you have to do, select everything as we did, Control C, and then you switch to Photoshop, right click on this right angle, and then you select a rectangle like this. You come here to the fill, and then you click on this color, and then you click the color, the new color that you copied from the website in here. Click on OK. So as you can see, it is better now. So this is the before, and this is the after. Perfect. So designers using a dark background behind the test for it to be visible, or checking the contrast ratio of the colors he used. They don't do that. All that they do is that they use stroke to solve that problem. This brings me to the second mistake most designers make, that is using stroke wrongly. Let me show you what I mean by that. Now, this is what I mean. Let's zoom out and let me show you something. Let me copy this cool ad board to one side, like so. Instead of designers using the rectangle or something behind it to make it legible, let me delete this rectangle. What they do is that they make sure that the test of the layer is selected. So let's right click on the test. Let's make sure that the layer of the test is selected. That's the 20,000 subscribers. Now, let's come down here to FX, click on this, and then go to stroke. Yeah, so they will increase the stroke around 12. Yeah. And then they will take, let's say, a color around this area. Okay. And then they will do the same for the second one. So for that one, I can just copy the effect on it. So I'll press and hold on Alt on the keyboard and then I'll take the effect and copy it to the other one. But it is too much, so I'll open up the stroke by double clicking on the stroke and then I'll decrease it like 4. 4 is some way. We let them just keep it like this. So with these two, which one do you think is the best? Let me know in the comment section. I think this is, but you can tell me in the comment section if you think this is better. Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to say. Many designers use the stroke when they don't need to use the stroke. It's as simple as that. I'm not saying strokes cannot be used in your design, but what I'm saying is that most designers are overusing the stroke and then they are making their designs amateur. So sometimes a design will look good, but because of too much stroke here and there, it makes the design look too amateur. Let's use this design right here for instance. You can see that the stroke is making the test details visible and then readable. So let's take out the stroke and try to make sure that the color behind the test is legible and then it can be read straight away without adding a stroke. And this is the result. And you can see that this, thing, this one is better than this. Or if you think it's still better, let me know in the comment section. There are thousands of typefaces out there. You may call it font. Now let me explain this. Font is the weight of a typeface. So let's say the typeface is the font family. So let's use Ponsaras for instance. Ponsaras is a typeface. Bebas is a typeface. Argentum Sans is a typeface. The names of the font that you know, they are typeface. Now, font is the weight of it. So let's say if you take Montserrat, it has Montserrat Bold, Montserrat Medio, Montserrat Light, Montserrat Italic, Montserrat blah 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 blah. All those things are at fonts in the typeface. This is basically the difference between a typeface and then a font. Now, many designers know a lot of typefaces. So when they are designing, they want to show us that, yeah, they know a lot of typefaces than any other. So they tend to combine like four to five or, or even six different kind of typefaces on one simple poster that they are designing which is sometimes wrong not even sometimes it's always wrong because you can't combine five typefaces on one simple poster that you're designing just to convey a simple information no it doesn't work like that this brings me to the third mistake many designers make that is using too many typefaces according to senior designers and myself the most you can go is three you go beyond three for a particular reason or when you know what you are exactly doing you don't just pick any font then you combine them together so you can pick one typeface for your main test 
one typeface for your detail and then another for your CTE. And sometimes you can even stick with one typeface and you use their various weights to make your design very nice. And then you use, let's say, one additional one to spice it up. And that will work for you. Now, when you talk about typefaces, that means you need to talk about colors. So you can design your flyers to be top notch, but if you combine the wrong colors, or let's say if we use too many colors for the design, your hard work comes down to zero. So you don't need to use too many colors if you don't know what you're actually doing. You can stick to two or three maximum. So you can use one for the main test, the other for the details, and then one for the CTE. And that will be fine. You see, combining too many colors on one particular design is not for the week. So if you know you don't have any color knowledge, just stick to one or two or mostly three. And then you are good to go. One is not applies because the main design looks flat. So two or three. Then you are good to go. You want to follow someone like DD1 Graphics who can combine like six colors on one design and still make the design work. So if you have not mastered the use of colors, you cannot match head to head its DD1 Graphics. It has mastered the use of colors very well. As for UI UA designers like myself, sometimes you use too many colors to represent something like a pie chart or let's say a statistical data representation or something. The fifth mistake that most designers make is that they tend to use images like anyhow and they use them wrongly. Now, before you put an image on your design, you have to make sure that the image is trying to assist as to the information that you want to portray out there or let's say information that you want to send out there. The image has helped you and then convey that information. So mostly, you can see that when senior designers are designing, the color of the shirt matches the color of the design. That's one thing. Second, you can see that when a person is facing a particular direction, you can see that they will add a particular test over there. And also sometimes, when the person is stretching his hand or like something, everything that you put on your design, it has to assist your user's policy. It has to assist the overall information that you are sending out there so that people will look at the image and it'll help them travel to the design so that they will understand whatever that you are saying. And one important thing is that many designers overlook the quality of their image. Now, let me tell you, when you put two designs at one side, like this and that, you can see that the quality of the image of this one is better than the quality of the image of this one. But they are all the same designs. But why? Because if your image is lower in quality, it's going to affect the overall design making your design look too amateurish. Sometimes your designs may not even look good, but because the picture is nice, the design also look nice. Sometimes the agenda flies that you see around, you see that, oh, this design doesn't even look anything serious. But because the picture on it is very nice, you can see that it also speaks for the design and then the design and type become very nice. So a sharp image makes your designs also sharp. It is as simple as that. If you have saved it me all the way to this point, then I have two more tips for you. The first one is that whenever you are designing, don't just enter in Photoshop, Figma, Corel Draw, and then start designing. Make sure you look for inspiration. One cool designer said that inspiration is like ingredient that we use to cook. When a chef is going to cook, or let's say when you want to cook for yourself in the house, you go for ingredients in the market or if you have some already in the kitchen, you just take them and then you cook with them. If you want to cook, you don't just go there and cook without ingredients. So looking for inspiration is like looking for ingredients. But sometimes you may have some in stock already. That is, you may have some in mind. That is, if you are someone who has been surfing the internet, looking for great, great designs, you may have some already. So that differentiates a senior designer from a beginner designer. A beginner design, you might actually take some time to look through a great designs to get some inspiration here. They just waste their time on social media, scrolling to TikTok and all that. Sorry for that if you are one of them. But that's what I do. If I am there and I'm not doing anything, I'm bored and all that. I take my phone, scroll through uh, Instagram and uh, um, Pinterest, look to great, great designs and then analyze them. And then that, that will spark your creativity. That will tell you that, no, what you are doing, you are doing this blindly, or let's say you are not doing anything. Up your game. So that's that's how you might do as a designer if you really want to mm, looking at great, great designs. And it's going to inspire you to create something great. So if you have an ingredient already in the kitchen, you just go and then you cook. That will be very fast for you. But if you don't have ingredients already in the kitchen, you go and look for them so that you bring them in the kitchen. So before you put in Photoshop, Figma, Corel Draw, make sure you have some ingredients ready to put together and then cook. As simple as that. So websites like Pinterest, Instagram, Dribble, 
Behance, they are all there to help you get an inspiration from great designers. Now, the second bonus tip is that start using AI. That's very simple. Just start using AI. Recently, I made a video about AI and how AI is changing the world of graphic design. So if you have not watched that video, I will encourage you to watch. That's it. That's right now, AI is changing how graphic designers work and then AI is making the work more easier and then faster. So if you are not using AI, the one who is using AI will either be faster or better than you unless the person is not using it right. So if you learn how to use AI with graphic design very well, it will be better than the person who is not even using AI at all. So in the video, I said that designers who uses AI will replace designers who do not use AI. I talked a lot about AI in that video. So you can check it out and then see how the AI is changing the world of graphic design. This is the video, you can click on it right now to watch it out. Until next time guys, quench your creativity. Peace.